we're back for round three of the fabrication and the next steps are going to be mounting the volume control here on the front and probably going to mount a couple of the output transformers and we'll see how far we get in the 20 minutes or so I like to keep these videos to. In my previous amp I had the volume knob mounted kind of more in this area right here but I used a smaller audio note potentiometer. This time, and those things are about 50 bucks, we're going to be using the kind of the common Alps volume pots. That are nothing wrong with them, nice quality, but they are a little beefier and they take up a little more room. And I'm a little concerned about it getting into the driver tube sockets. And so I'm going to move this over. And I don't want to put it like way over here in the corner. I think that looks kind of weird. I want to pull it over about right there. I think that's still, you know, symmetrically. Let me see if I can roll this down. I think that symmetrically still looks nice. Without being crowding the driver tube too much. And so it looks like about... 30 millimeters was a good distance to center this at. So we're going to center this thing vertically because this is a fairly, fairly large knob. And then go 30 millimeters from the edge. So we're going to come in, kind of eyeball the center for the first mark. Put a little hash there. And then again, we know this is a 2 inch tall chassis. So we're going to come down to 1 inch or 25.4 millimeters and mark the other. And then we come and check it again from this side. And that looks, that looks dead center to me. So we're going to get our little double piece of wood here. Once again to support behind where we're going to be punching this get that like that put our center punch on the mark and mark our hole as always we're going to start with a fairly small bit as a pilot hole and I try to kind of swap between my smaller bits so I'm not using the same one every time so I'm not wearing them out. And I do know how to hand sharpen drill bits but the smaller ones are a real pain to do and have them work well. I think we got another, I think we got a worn out drill bit. You can tell when you're not getting any chips off of it and it's just making dust. It's probably time to either sharpen or replace the bit. Let's see how this next size up one does. Cut much better. Okay, there's our pilot hole. So the next thing we want to do is we want to measure the diameter of the outside of these threads and it looks like it's about eight millimeters. So let me try to find the right drill bit. I think we can do this and just from the pilot hole to the drilled size. But again I like to have these things fit with pretty tight tolerance. So if we do air a little bit 
on the side of too small, that's okay. I'd rather come back and have to drill it slightly larger than have a really sloppy fit. And like I said in the other video, when you when you can tell you when you're getting close to the end, try to back off the pressure on it so it doesn't like jump through. And that fits perfect. So we want to get our get our large bit. Deeper the hole. like that. The other thing that we need to do here is, see how it's got this little stud that sticks up? That's a locating stud that sticks up past the little flange that it mounts to. So we want to drill a little hole in the chassis right here next to this so this hole can't, so the potentiometer can't spin. And we want to mount this with the leads coming th towards the open bottom side. So, so it's mounted like that. So we're gonna drill this hole, that mounting hole over here to this side, and we need to locate it. So the easiest way to do that, I feel, is to try to measure from the center of the peg over to the metal like that. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect if you have to slot the hole out slightly because it's covered up with this big knob. You're not going to see any of that. So let's go ahead and so we, we're measuring from the edge of this hole over to what should be the center of the little peg. So we're going to go like this, and then you can double check it by holding this up, putting this through the hole, and see if that looks, if it's hitting on the mark, and it is. So we come back, and again, this time we want to make sure we don't hit the center punch too hard where we put a dent in the chassis next to this hole. So we put our punch there and probably need a little better mark than that. There we go. And we will drill a little pilot hole and then our a real hole. And then just to be sure, let's hold this up one more time and see if this looks... Yep, that's real close. Get the right bit in. Now we're going to drill our final hole. Yeah, this poor drill bits, I think it's about, it's seen better days. And let's see how close we got on. I think we hit it right on the money. And it's going to sit just like that. Let me, let me zoom in here so you can see what that looks like and it's, it's just like that and we still can put 
We might put a little washer underneath it so we don't have as much thread sticking up. See how this volume knob's made where it's got a deep countersink here for the nut. So we probably don't need to even bother with that. We can just bolt this thing down. So we got the volume knob mounted. Let's go ahead and mount a couple output transformers. Okay. So now, now we're going to get our wood and stack it up underneath the amplifier. Let me go get a couple more pieces of wood. I think that will probably do. That's beautiful. Okay. So we know we're going to put these output transformers over here in the back corner. And we don't want this end bell. We want this end bell flush with the back of the amplifier. So it's not hanging off the end of it. We want to get this close enough to the edge, but not past where this is rolled over, where it's still flat. So we want that one right there. And then we want this one right in front of it, right like that, or right next to it like that. And I like to get about a baby finger's width between them. So let's see what that is just as a measurement. That's like 10 millimeters between them. And that'll, that'll keep our output transformers away from this power transformer. So we don't have to worry about them picking up any hum from inductance. So the next part we want to do is get our little scribe. And you want to mark these holes about in the middle of this slot fore and aft. And this is one of those things where, again, we've got a little bit of a flange here that'll hide some sins if we have to move the holes around a little bit once we get them drilled. And it's so much easier and faster to me just to direct mark them through the holes than it is trying to measure where each of these holes is going to be in space. And we want these to be in the middle of these slots so there's a little bit of adjustment fore and aft so that when we get done you can adjust them around a little bit so they're so like the they're lined up even and look nice. So got our holes marked. Now one thing I I do, do try to do is see try to find like an average of where it looks like the centers of the holes are and then mark that too. And that way the holes are then drilled evenly from the back edge and then you know that you can line up the transformers. And then I'll do the same thing with the front holes. Just look for a kind of average measurement. And like I said, there's a, there's a little flange that we're bolting down. So it hides a little, you know, hides some of these little marks and stuff. So you won't see any of that. And just so you know, that was 65 millimeters on these holes. And then this hole here, I had those marked at 15 millimeters. So now what we want to do is make sure this piece of wood is back in like hanging off this end just a little bit, like stack those up even, and then have that hanging off just a little bit 
so that you can kind of hook that in there and you make sure that the woods underneath where we're going to be drilling and where we're going to be center punching. And of course my center punch was underneath the chassis which was not, not what we want. Because that you know that solid wood's under there, you can be fairly aggressive punching these holes to make sure you get a really good center punch mark. And you may have seen in my previous videos, if you don't have a center punch handy, or you don't own one and you're getting ready to do this, you can just get a big nail and sharpen it with a file and put like a 45 degree bevel on it. and it works really nice for a center punch. I've used one of those quite often. Okay, we know that bit's not doing real well. Let's see how this one's... And go ahead and make a mark. Put like a little cone-shaped mark in each one of these places. And then we'll set the transformers back up here and make sure these holes look like they're in the right place. Those look great. The other thing you can do, and it, it takes a little longer, but it helps make sure that you're getting everything aligned and in the right place, is to dr just drill one hole, put a bolt through it, and then hold, kind of locate it with that one bolt. And then mark and drill the next hole. And then when you get two bolts in it, you can see kind of where the other holes are lining up. And that way you can make sure that you're getting everything drilled where it's all lined up and it's going to work nice. I feel confident enough to go ahead and just drill these out. But if you've never done this kind of work before, that might be something you want to do just to kind of, you know, double check yourself as you're working along. See, the other nice thing about having the wood behind it is you can put a little more pressure on it. And then when it goes through it, the wood stops it from like going in real deep. Okay, we'll come back one more time and make sure these pilot holes look like they're all centered in these tabs. Because if they're not right now, you can, you know, elongate one of the pilot holes 
before you had you know drill the final hole to kind of fix your mistake. But these all look good to me. So I need to find the bit that matches up with the bolts we're going to use. So we're going to be using some 1024 bolts, which are about as big as it'll fit through these lugs. And they'll really hold these fairly heavy transformers in place well. It would probably be 5 millimeter. Might be 4 to get it to go through those holes. So... To be safe, you could probably use 4 millimeter hardware, but we're using this American-sized 1024 Allen bolts to hold these down. This is something that you can go like just one drill bit size bigger than it would squeeze through, and that gives you a little bit of adjustment room for the bolt because the bolt, the head of this bolt, you can see it's got a fairly big shoulder on it and then we have one of these k-lock nuts that has the washer built into it you know hopefully that part of the video wasn't too out of focus i had it focused for when we were drilling the hole for the volume control again i've tried tried using this camera on autofocus one time and every time my hand would go and get out of it the focus would like go zoom, zoom, zooming in and out and it was super irritating so I've I've gone back to just using manual focus and then I got but I got to remember to refocus the camera when I change where we're working so have to excuse me if that wasn't totally in focus that last little part but I don't think it'll be too bad Okay, now the last thing we have to do is deburr our holes. And I know you've seen me using the deburring bit with my fingers, and I do recommend doing it by hand for holes this size, because I feel like that it's real easy for this bit, which is close enough to these size that it might dig in and get a bite, and you know, booger up the hole worse than it's helping. But on these smaller size holes like we drilled, it's perfectly fine to just come back with the drill and... And deburr them like that. So let's do these. And there we go. We've got all our mounting holes for the output transformer drilled. So I think we're probably getting near the 20 minute limit, which is what I try to hold these videos to. And so we're going to stop here and we'll come back in the next round. We'll drill the holes for the transformer, the choke, and then drill the holes for the wires to go through the chassis. And I think we can get all of that done in one video. That stuff's a lot easier to do than the volume control is a little tricky to really do it nice. And so, but I'm glad to get that done. Hope you're enjoying this series. If you are, please subscribe, like the videos, and I'll see you soon for some more 6SQ7 fun. Have a great day.